Chapter 4 of this class discusses when it's appropriate to correct others and what attitude we should have when we do correct others. First and most importantly, we must always correct people in truth and in love. The attitude and intentions with which we approach people is very important when we correct people biblically. It is not our responsibility to correct everyone in every situation. We must look to the scriptures and determine when it's appropriate and when it's not. Another question to consider is by which standard and authority are you correcting someone? For us as Christians, we live our lives according to the standard and authority of the Holy Scripture, God's sacred word. But there is a time to correct and rebuke others, especially when standing up for the truth of God's word, which has all authority in heaven and on earth. We are standing in the Kidron Valley, west of the Mount of Olives and east of Temple Mount. Behind me is a massive corridor of ancient whitewashed tombs. Why were tombs whitewashed in ancient Israel? It was to make them stand out as a warning for people not to come in contact with them. In Levitical law, you were deemed as unclean if you came into contact with a corpse and you were not able to participate in holy observances until you were deemed as clean. So tombs were whitewashed as a warning to keep people from accidentally making contact with them. By the time of the first century, during Jesus' earthly ministry, the religion of the Jews had become hollow, corrupt, and legalistic. The Jewish ruling council dogmatically enforced the letter of the law with no heart for the true spirit and meaning of the law. Jesus harshly rebuked them in effort to correct them because while they cared greatly about outward appearances and religious practice, spiritually they were dead on the inside with no true love for God or the people that they had been entrusted to shepherd. In Matthew 23, 27 and 28, Jesus says, Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For you are like whitewashed tombs, which outwardly appear beautiful, but within are full of dead people's bones and all uncleanliness. So you also outwardly appear righteous to others, but within you are full of hypocrisy and lawlessness. These massive whitewashed tombs were most likely in view as Jesus rebuked the scribes and Pharisees for their hypocrisy. Jesus compared the scribes and Pharisees to tombs that were beautiful on the outside but were filled with death inside. The hollow religious practice of most of the Jewish leaders of Jesus' day was damning because while it focused much attention and detail to outward appearances and legalistic law keeping, it wasn't done with a heart of humility and repentance towards God. They harshly applied the law to others, but not to themselves. They also used their power and influence to enrich and benefit themselves. They were very strict in the administration of the law, although they didn't live up to it themselves. Today in our world, we are often told that we shouldn't speak biblical truth in certain situations because people deem it as not nice or unloving. But this is completely unbiblical. Withholding the truth to be nice or because you are afraid it will be taken offensively is actually the most unloving thing that anyone could ever do. Theologian Warren Wiersbe once said, truth without love is brutality, but love without truth is hypocrisy. Jesus is the truth and he spoke the truth in every situation. It is only through the truth that people are set free. The truth not only sets us free, but it's also meant to rebuke us and correct us and conform us into the image of Christ. In Revelation 3.19, the resurrected Christ said, Those whom I love, I reprove and discipline. So be zealous and repent. Here Jesus says that he reproves and disciplines, and it's in this same spirit that we must speak the truth also. Jesus rebuked and corrected the scribes and Pharisees so that they might repent, 
but also for the benefit of the ones that they were leading astray. Jesus called them whitewashed tombs to warn the people that while they seemed religious externally, that inside they were dead bones and that following their example would only lead to death. He did this to warn the people that they were wolves and not true shepherds. We must use the Word of God as a tool of correction because it alone has the authority and the power to draw people to repentance and to bring restoration. As brothers and sisters in Christ, we must all submit ourselves to the authority of God's Word and to those who rightfully use it to correct us. And to the unbeliever, we must evangelistically preach the truth of God's Word in hope that the Spirit of God might draw them to repentance and salvation in Christ.